kids' classes, you know that Pierre Dulane is known for his dancing classrooms, yeah. which is wonderful, and he's brought it really to the world. But you were actually doing a lot of work with kids at schools. It started very right no, it wasn't many years before that. It, oh, it wasn't? About the same time. Okay. Okay. I left Arthur Murray's, and I had a covenant not to compete within 20 miles. So, in terms of dancing. But at Arthur Murray's, we started Zanesville. Yeah. So I, we had, I thought that someone had called the school and asked for a teacher to come, and the teacher quit. Yes, and then you went that was off. David Jackson. That, David went first. I went to Zanesville. You Zanesville. Arthur Murray's Yes. Class. We were there. Yeah, Christy and I went. That was only one class, though. And, I mean, one school. And it, it, it was in Zanesville. It had been started by the, um, girls had a lady from Boston. She married a banker in Zanesville. She was very proper Bostonian. So she started the Zanesville Cotillion, where the girls had to wear little white gloves. And the boys wore and the suits, and had suits and ties. And they taught uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And it was all even men, boys and girls. And if someone was sick, they would get a substitute. It was so organized. Very, very proper. And they had uh, originally, many years ago, they had a piano player. And then we brought live contemporary music into the ballroom, I mean, into the dance class. David went first uh, um, with, Chris, with Christy to the classes. Okay, so those were the only, that was the only children's class we had. How old were these kids at the time? Um, the break? Uh, from the sixth oh, to the fifth through, no, it was fifth, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah. Fifth, fifth six, six, seven, eight, eight nine. Uh, yeah, not nine. We didn't have eight and nine. I did, but seven. not later. Yeah, but we didn't have that there. So, and that was one class that was done on Saturday. Okay, then I, I left Arthur Murray's, and I had a covenant not to compete. And so, I then could not teach my students or students from Arthur Murray's. So then I went to various PTA um, uh, organizations. I had talked to Pierre about what he was doing, but he was doing in the inner city, and he was going through the government to get grants. So grants. you really started the same time. <laughs> the, 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 main, the multiple studios, about the same time. I could not afford to wait for government grants and to apply for them. And then they have to inspect them. I mean, you know, there's so much red tape. I needed to have money to live on. Well, I started in the public schools this year, and I had to pass a criminal background oh. check. And yeah, yes, sure. Please. Oh, there's all kinds Absolutely. of Absolutely. You had to be covered to protect yourself. I had to, to fill Absolutely. Well, plus, you never know what's plus now, happen. I don't know whether you have to do an insurance policy, but um, that's. That's also a big part of it as well, to insurance. Sure. So anyway, so I went to uh, PTOs, and uh, they're in Arlington, here in Columbus. There were two middle schools in Arlington that had been having uh, cotillion classes for 30 years, and the lady was about ready to retire. So I went to them, and I was able to take over the class. And as a result, I've been doing Arlington classes for. It. 40 years oh, now. So you've taught parents and their children. Well, you and their children. Like country clubs. I have, I have one family, I have four generations. Wow. I'm teaching. The, the, the father, the oldest one, says, God, you're older than the church. <laughs> and now the kids I said, no, like, I'm, I said, I'm going to go out like, um, there are only going to be two of us left, three of us left, share me and the cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, a lot of these kids are 30 years old now, the first yeah. group. Or 40. Uh, but then when we opened Dance Plus, he started having group classes on Sunday, which a lot of the parents came to. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, that started the whole thing because they thought, why don't you teach at our kids' school? So at the present time, I, in a year's time, I teach at 32 schools. And that starts from September, no, actually, the school starts the last two weeks August. in August. I start in August, I end up about May, and I have classes, probably five classes a week. Some of the classes, I, the Arlington class that I told you about, that I took over from a Mrs. Potts and the general, 
um, we have 300 in a class. One class. I have. The one I observed had about 200 kids, and then you had many chaperones. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, how yes. Many, how many chaperones? Oh, well, 10. 10 for a class of 300, 10 or 15 chaperones, because we do lines. The boys mm -hmm. don't ask the girls. Don't ask girls for a dance at that age. This is seven or the grade. girls will switch lines on purpose. Mm -hmm. there'll, there'll be a line of boys and girls. The boys dance with a box step for 30 seconds with one girl. Then he shakes hands. He moves down one lady to the right. Then he dances with her 30 seconds, one lady to the right. And then and when they at line number one, when the boy no longer has a lady on the, he's moved down to the right, there's no longer a lady, he goes to the beginning of two. Two goes to the beginning of three. So they all dance equally, whether the child is is uh, shy, popular, you know, everybody dances equally. Some of the girls sometimes become smart after three or four classes and move their lines so they can dance with their favorite boys. But I, I have a young lady, uh, Emily, who dances on top of the table so they can see her, and I hire a junior or a senior high school boy so that the kids, the seventh and eighth grade kids, have somebody to look up to and think that it's somebody cool, and it's generally a boy that's a football player or mm -hmm. something like that. How many kids do you think you have? Oh, I'm on my 80,000. I've got over 80,000. I've kept track. Have you really? I'm going to go to 100,000. The Worthington School, though, is special. They teach how to read off of a French menu. Oh, I, yes, I do an eighth, ninth, yeah, grade. Etiquette. That the PTA dinner etiquette. Dinner etiquette. This is a, the lady who, there's, in Worthington, there are five schools in Paul, in Worthington. There's one lady who, who hires me. She puts together the program and brings in the, the children, okay? So she pays me a salary to teach the ballroom class. When they go, when they graduate into eighth and ninth, ninth grade, then they have an etiquette class. So we move the dance classes to a country club. The first time we show we show the young men and young women how to take a lady into a restaurant, we have a parent chaperone who say, how many in your party? They'll say four. And so four of the children will always escort the ladies to a chair, pull the chair out, to have a seat. Okay, then the next group will come in and they'll say, how much in your party? The father would say that, they'll say six. So six of them will go to a table, pull the chair out for the lady. Once everybody's seated, this year we had a hundred and something in our etiquette class. We tell them how immediately put the napkin onto their uh, lap. lap. You know, there used to be a time when you leave a table, you stand up, you put your napkin on the seat. It's very unsanitary. Now, Miss um, Matter says, we can leave the table, you fold your napkin up and put it to the side of your plate. Not on the seat that somebody else's butt has been on. <laughs> but when I say when I say it like that, they all laugh. the kids hey, hey, hey. And then we, we show them we have we have a place setting and then um, one place setting on each table and we have enough plates to handle eight boys and girls. And we talk to them about what the soup spoon is. Forks, and forks and knives, and all salad, and so we say, okay, we're going to have, we're going to have a game. We're going to give gift cards to every, to the table that sets up everybody's eight place setting first. I said, ready, go. And I said, if I could hear anybody make a sound, rumbling and car crashing, I said, your whole table sits down, you're eliminated. So it's they like a game, okay? So they're all quiet, putting down the silver. You know, everything's in a big mess pile. And then the table that uh, sets up first and sits down, then they get a $15 gift card, each one of them, you know. So they think it's really cool. And they play games like that. You know, so they learn how to play something. And then we have three kinds of meals. We have a buffet meal, we have a sit-down meal, and uh, we have one where, where the food is served. These are three different occasions. Yeah, three different occasions. And they go through a receiving line with the chaperones. They learn how they to introduce, introduce them. each other. Yes, the boys introduce uh, themselves to chaperone. Good evening, Mr. Mr. Jones. May I, my name is Ron Clark. May I present my partner, Susan Smith? 
and then the next time the ladies say, good evening, Mrs. Jones, my name is Susan Smith, shakes hand, and he's at my partner, Ron Clark. So it gives them a chance to introduce himself to an adult as an adult. Do you still do that in your bowling classes too? The mm -hmm. one I observed, you had all the kids come up and escort. Oh yes, at the end of every class. Introduce your partner to an adult. Uh -huh. yeah. So I use that in, in my little kids, not the introduction, but the escort position. And it's yes. the most organized part of the class. Oh yes. And they have to come up, they have oh, to yes. shake my hand, they have to look me in the eye. Oh yes. And smile because a lot of these kids will not. Yeah, they that's they look down, they won't smile. Right. You know, they have to, they can't leave. You know, that's I tell the chaperones, do not let let them if they give a wimpy handshake with the shake hands yeah, you like know. this. Yeah, I have to get a yes, better one. But right here. And that's one reason to make them do it again. Another if they don't if they mumble, hello, oh, 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 my name is and another thing, eye contact. And the parents are very good about that. They'll say, No, you've got to do that again, please. No, you've got to do that again. So uh, the onus is off me. The, the parents who get to the chaperones feel really, really empowered. And they're impressed with because they say that they, their own children don't do that at home. But when they're, everybody has to do it, they do that thing. But he has like ladies' choice. So he's taught the men, the boys, when the lady comes within 10 feet of you, you can stand up. And then, uh, yes, and then we'll have, I'll take a young girl, and then we'll, uh, all the boys are seated, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. I'll walk the girl over to a group of boys with their partners. The boys have to stand up, you know, and walk her back to another little room, walk into another area, so they get used to standing up. Well, the parents don't do this at home. Uh, and a lot of the parents don't even know how to do this themselves. It's amazing. Uh, I mean, my parents didn't know any of that. Uh, and I've only learned it from being around him and yeah. being in dance business and going to formal dinners and uh, so I've learned that. But most people well, don't know that. Well, the older gentlemen that I teach, they will all stand up at a table when the lady comes. That's good. But I'm amazed how many men don't want to open the door now. Gene always, my husband always opens the car door for me. Sure. But there's a lot of men who don't do that. Oh, uh, that's just being polite you know, and... Yeah. Um, I've heard young ladies so say that they don't like a man to do that. Well, and I, I do like Well, I <laughs> tell the guy... And I think in our business, this is, I mean, this is what we do. But women have gotten independent. Yes, and... Well, and I can open the door. And they don't want to depend on a man to do that. I know, but... It's just a very nice... I think it's still good to teach that. I think, yes, and, and if it's appropriate, and the lady... The lady walks to the door, and you're standing in front of her. You open it, and you can tell whether uh, a lady likes it or not. Then you know not to do it again for her. But I'll open the door if someone has a lot of bags. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. But even lady. if you're going into a restaurant, the man should open the door. And I open it for people that's not even with our group. I just open it because it's just it's the way I was brought up. One of the things I say at the first lesson, we uh, we have the boys and girls come in and boy. They're seated, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. And I said, if you go to a dance, you are not allowed to refuse a dance if somebody asks you. I said, it's not a lifetime commitment. They're not asking for your lifetime liking. Or you don't even have to like a person. If somebody asks you, they probably want to get to know you a little bit, and you might find out that they're a nice person. Okay, but. If you don't plan to accept the dance, don't go to the dance, go to a movie. Really? And so, in our class, nobody's allowed to refuse. And after the first lesson, we have, and this is so hard for them, we have, the, I say, gentlemen, walk across the room and ask a young lady, not from your school, mm -hmm. to be your partner. Okay. And then they have to say, may I have this dance? They offer their arm, the lady has to put their arm to the mat, go to the center of the room. Once everybody is as a partner, then we start the music. But I remember in middle school going through things like this, and it's tough because oh. you look at people that you want to dance with and you think, they're never going to accept me. Mm -hmm. And so you, you just don't know what well, to do. You don't really want to take that chance. Well, yeah, you don't want to take that chance and be blown away. 
You know, what's interesting, I have 18 Catholic schools. Most of the Catholic schools, the young men and women, have grown up together and know each other, okay, in that particular school. And so it's just one individual school. Some of the schools, they, because the schools are not big enough, or because they want to have a big class, they put two or three schools together. So it's the first time that these young boys and young girls are mixing on a social level. Maybe they competed in basketball or in a football game, but it's still a school separation. And so here's a stranger who you're saying take dance position, where you hold the hand here, and then the man has to, I had to tell the lady to put the left hand out. I say, gentlemen, reach under her arm, find out her shoulder weight, and then Ooh, yeah. and I said, is this, a, is this the worst thing you've ever had to do in your entire life? Yes. And the poor boys and girls have sweaty hands. And once you're in dance position, make them do a box step. I say, okay, let go, shake hands, say thank you very much. Gentlemen, move one leg to the right. The boys are going like this. Yeah. Wiping the palm. The girls are doing that. I mean, it, the first, first time is really It's tough. Yeah. And you know, in, in this world today, the, we don't have the same social interaction that we used to have 20 years ago. Everyone's on their devices. Devices, yes. And that's our way, means of communication. And But there's no touching. So it's so tough for 6th, 7th, even 8th graders to touch a partner. Well, people and don't even touch it. They don't even know where to touch. It was and what's well, yeah, I know, but people don't even talk to each other. Yeah. Don't they let alone next, touch each other. They're sitting next to each other, texting yes. each other. And yeah. when you tell a, a young man to put his hand on her shoulder blade, inevitably the hand goes all the way down to the waist yes. above the, the butt. And not realizing it, it's just a natural thing. And we talk about it. I, I say, ladies, they're, your body is something that you must respect, and you must have other people respect your body. There are certain places where it's legal to hold you, certain places which should not be legal. And do not let any man, parents love this, any man touch you other than on your shoulder blade and your hand. And parent mothers love that. So are they so you're supposed to tell the guy? Yes. They, they, well, they, they take the hand, hand and they put it in. They'll say, that's not my shoulder blade. So we talk about shoulder blade. And I, I, I get Emily, our teacher, and turn her around, and we show, this is this is a shoulder blade. This is no, no. Shoulder blade. They don't even no, no. realize they're doing it. <laughs> no. no, because they're the shoulder. the couple in the studio when they're new, the man's Oh, yeah, the man's yeah. hand. He has no idea. No. Yeah. And the ladies always do it. Yeah. Raise it as harm, yeah. <laughs> but we, we make. But you're making fun and, and making, making it, it making it fun and, and, and making it making it something that they understand, you know, and yeah. fun. Yes, and so the, the the classes are very very successful, and it's so they're successful because once again I have younger people who are doing the demonstrations as well. Well, I, run, I run the class. He's always been great. He yeah. also has Friday Night Association, which is Columbus School for Girls and the Boys Academy. Academy, well, so you've got the three top-notch people, top mm -hmm. students, and and they love it. They they seem to love the, mm -hmm. the dances. Oh, yes. I, as I, I'm teaching a young lady now, I taught in sixth grade. Um, she went to Columbus School for Girls. She's getting married. She's a dentist. She's not 28 years old. She, her, her husband is 30, also a dentist in the Air Force. And her father, who took lessons with, with me, with his wife, uh, called me up just um, last week. And so I'm teaching the wedding dance. Uh, yes. I'm teaching uh, the bride and groom. He's in the Army, so we, there's a limited amount of time that I have with him. I'm teaching the father-daughter dance as well.